Hi friends, so I'm back again today with part two of the message that I had shared earlier. I really encourage you if you have not seen that first part to go back and watch it because it's this is going to be a continuation. I'm going to be referring to things from that video in this one and I'm not going to be explaining why. So this is like a message if this message is for you, you have to listen to the whole thing, okay? And the reason I'm doing this is because I really wanted to make sure that I got out as much as possible in terms of each aspect of the dream, what I was seeing in this dream. And um, I found that sometimes I actually do want to break my videos up and I end up not doing it. And I think it causes me to sometimes rush through the message because I'm also trying to not make the videos too long. And also... Um, yeah, it just causes me not to really like give you as much as I can on each point. So I think I'm going to try and see how this goes. Obviously with the shorter dreams, I'm not going to be doing this, but I think with longer dreams where there's a lot of meat, where there's a lot of information, I do want to try and break them up for you guys. Um, I think it's also going to be just be easier to watch as well and listen to. So yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> if you're new, you're most welcome. If this is your first time seeing me being on this channel, welcome. There's a disclaimer. If you are new, of course, if you know the disclaimer already, you can just use the time markers below the video in the description and just uh, skip ahead to the message. But if you are new, it's so important to note that not every prophetic message that I share here is meant for you. It's important that you take it back to the Holy Spirit if you think that this is for you and you are excited about it, you think it resonates in your spirit, it could just be your emotions. So make sure that you're in tune with the Holy Spirit and in line with His will at all times. And that you have a relationship with him, that you're able to take this back to him. And I know that for some of you, this is going to be confirmation, which is great. But if you have any questions, make sure that you do the same. Just take it all back to the Holy Spirit. It's all about that relationship. So, like I said, this is part two. And I'm just going to pull up my notes quickly. So, the next thing that God was showing me in this dream was how once he has removed all those people that were not for you that I described in part one of this message, this is a part of the dream where things do get exciting, okay? So he is going to bring unlikely people into your life who are going to be a part of this deliverance process that you are in, right? Um there's been a period where you've had to walk this walk on your own, where you've had to go through the deliverance process without much community. There, there may have been pockets of community, but um, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, alone time with the, with the Lord, just to him dealing with you one-on-one. -on -one. But now he's going to bring, he's going to replace the people that ha he has moved out of your life. And he's going to replace them with unlikely people, right, who will help you. And the Lord needs you to trust him with the process because for some of you, these people are going to be people that you may have judged harshly before in the past because of you know how you view them, certain prejudices that you may have. You may have looked at them in a certain way and categorized them in a certain way and judged them harshly. And the Lord is actually going to use these people to bless you. Um, some of them, I, as I saw in the dream, are going to be younger than you in the faith. They're going to be people who haven't even gone through most of what you've gone through or have had the kind of experience that you've had but the, it's, it's almost as if this community, yeah, it's, it's a community that God is bringing you into that is going to work together with you, ministering to you and you ministering to them. This is going to be a loving place, a place where you can fellowship with others because a lot of you have been isolated and the Lord does not want you to be isolated forever. It was only for a time and he's bringing you back into fellowship with people who are going to be for you. You're not going to have the same experiences that you had before. So even though um, God is removing certain people from your life, which is going to be good for you because those people were doing nothing but harming you, bringing you um, just, just 
cursedness. They were just causing you to be cursed and causing you to fall out of favor with others in in this time and I believe this is something that is in the very near future for a lot of you just because of the way that it happened in the dream and the proximity of events in the dream so you are going to experience this in the very near future you're going to be planted and please guys don't think that it's just going to be a church because very often we just think oh yeah God is just going to plant me in a church um, it could look very different than what you expect. Um, you know, like I said in the previous video, I had been planted in a beautiful uh, Christian uh, counseling ministry called Journey. And I know like they don't like to be called counselors because really it's about deliverance and discipleship. They disciple people and they help people deal with their wounds and their traumas. And that was my community. I made the most amazing friends in that circle, people who truly loved me, who knew me, who knew all my dirt, who knew everything because we had to confess a lot of stuff. We had to take out a lot of stuff and I knew their stuff, but we loved each other despite all the ugly, you know, and, and that's what God wants for for his people. He wants us to be in community in such a way that we're not trying to all just cover up all the ugly stuff and present ourselves um, all prim and proper, which is what we've seen in the church for so long. You know, people leaving church at the end of the day and the rest of the week, they're living a completely different life. Whereas what God is wanting to do in your life is have you around people that you can be accountable to who will be accountable to you as well um, that when you do have a situation where you do fall where you do commit sin because we are still going to commit a lot of sins none of us is there yet okay we're only going to be there once Jesus Christ comes and we're out of these earthly bodies and all is said and done right until then chances are extremely, extremely high. It is guaranteed that we are going to continue to commit sin. We're going to continue to find ourselves um, falling every now and then. It's how we get up. The Bible does say a righteous man may fall seven times, but he gets up. He gets up and you get up and you continue in your walk with the Lord. You, um, yeah, you fellowship with others. So what I liked about the program that I was a part of is that the community that it created for me was a safe place to pick up the phone and say, listen, I, I did this, you know, this thing happened. Um, and that the person on the other side would just listen. They would pray with me. They would help me to confess, you know, just lead me in a, in a confession and repentance prayer. But really it being about me and the Lord as opposed to them telling me, well, you know, nobody preaches to anybody. Okay. That's what I loved about this ministry. We were taught to take our pain to the Lord, take our mistakes to the Lord and not hide, not hide from him and not hide from each other. So that's the kind of community and fellowship that the Lord wants you to have, a space where you do not have to hide, where you can say, listen, I've sinned, this week was rough, I did this, you know, whatever it may be, the worst things, you know, um, and just be in that space where it is safe for you. So Sorry, I just need to quickly go back to my notes. That's that's the beauty of the place that God wants to take you, the people that he's bringing into your life. And what I saw in the dream is, you know, younger people removing those rubbish bags that had been a stench, you know, like in part one that I'd uh, explained. So that stench is going to be removed. A process of deliverance is going to happen. You are going to begin to have favor, more and more favor with people, not only with God, but with people too. So it's really exciting. You know, there's fellowship and community for you in the very near future. And it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be like you've never experienced before. Now, the two scriptures that the Lord gave me on James 5 16 um, James 5 16 James 5 16 which is therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. I love the scripture because it helps us understand that we are to confess our sins um, to each other and there are safe spaces to do that. And 
it brings healing. Confession and repentance bring healing. And of course, as we pray for one another, we experience the power and effectiveness of those prayers, right? The other scripture that the Lord gave me is 1 John 1 verse 7, which says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Another beautiful one. I probably use this verse almost every day in my prayers. No, every day in my prayers, not almost. I use it every day in my prayers because it's just such a beautiful um, way of uh, pleading the blood of Jesus over us. But really the focus today is on, you know, having fellowship with one another because we are walking in the light um, as, he, as the Lord is in the light. And of course, with that beautiful blood of Jesus, which purifies us from all sin, as we continue the deliverance process, we continue to be purified from that sin and made whole. Really, the goal is to be made whole. So that's part two. But wait, there's more. <laughs> there is a third part to this. It is really, really um, beautiful. It's going to be a shorter video, but I did feel led to separate it. So I'll see you in the next video. Always remember that God is a good father. He loves you so much because you, my friends, are so deeply special to him.